tradition. We try to uh, start with the smallest ceremony. Fiji is indeed privileged uh, to uh, host uh, the first of uh, such workshop. And we hope that uh, you have settled in well and you will enjoy uh, your time here uh, in Nandi as well. Uh, I, I look around the room, uh, I see a few familiar faces, uh, a few veterans in uh, disaster uh, management. I see Charles, I see Loti, but I don't see Philomena. Uh, so there must have been some changes. But it's good to ha have you here. And we all know how important this workshop is. Uh, some occasions I just uh, feel to speak out of the convictions of my heart, and I'll do that this morning. Uh, and I hope that uh, it will uh, be helpful uh, as we um, start off the, uh, the, the few days workshop. Uh, let me start by saying that a few weeks back I was approached by the Secretary General uh, of Fiji's Parliament, because every now and then uh, we have the speakers' debate, uh, and uh, they want to uh, have uh, a disaster as one of the uh, the next de debate uh, uh, topics, and the topic that they uh, they wanted to uh, have is uh, is Fiji ready for the next disaster. I asked the Secretary General who, who chose the topic and uh, what sort of disaster are you looking at? Is it natural disaster, man-made disaster? But this is something that we want to avoid. And for us particularly, uh, given our vulnerability and given the devastation, and how it affects the livelihoods of our people, how it affects our economies, particularly uh, our countries being uh, struggling uh, with uh, our economies. Uh, I, I kindly ask the Secretary General, well, we are ready to debate uh, on that. But uh, honestly, that is something that we do not uh, intend to discuss. But uh, it's, something, it's something that we need uh, to avoid. Are we ready for the next one? For us in the region, the whole world knows that we are vulnerable and we are one of the most affected regions, uh, Asia uh, and the Pacific. And we look at our socio-economic issues, we have uh, a lot of uh, people living in rural areas. We have a lot of smallholder farmers. We have a lot of vulnerable people within the region. Our women, our children, our youths, and most importantly, the people uh, who are living uh, beyond uh, the the municipalities, those that are living in in trying uh, conditions, th these are the, the ones that are badly affected when it comes to disasters. But disaster, I would say and argue, uh, is going to be one of the new norms. We were in uh, uh, Turkey just a few weeks back. Uh, to discuss on humanitarian uh, assistance related to conflicts or related to disasters. There's a lot of disturbance on our people in all the regions of the world, either due to conflict or to disaster. And for us, disasters is more relevant particularly for us in the region. For Fiji, if we look back, from 2010 we had Cyclone Thomas, a category 4 cyclone. Again in 2012 we have Cyclone Evans, 
again get tackled for. We were quite fortunate last year. We were saved when Cyclone Pam did not come Fiji's way, but it affected our new Vanuatu uh, brothers. And then 2016, we had uh, the worst in the region, Category 5 winds. We had billions of dollars in terms of losses and damage. About 50% of our GDP was taken away just over a few hours by Winston. I'm trying to tell us that this is going to be the new norm. And it is one of the major lessons learned from Winston. The way we live, let us accept the fact that this is going to be a new norm. Therefore, attitudes must change. Policies must change. We need some re-engineering processes. One of the major changes that we made in the Fijian government a few years back, starting from as early as 2007, was shifting from a culture of reaction to a culture of preparedness. I'll say that again. One of the major shifts that we made in the Fijian government way back from 2007 was shifting from a culture of reaction to a culture of prevention and preparedness. Surprisingly, we've had seven consecutive years of economic growth over this period. And that's unprecedented. And it's quite an achievement. Shifting from a culture of reaction to a culture of prevention. Let us accept the fact that this is going to be the new norm. But what do we do to prepare us for the future? I personally have been involved in disaster management in Fiji for quite a few years now. One of the major observations that I made when I came into the disaster office was the way we treated disaster and its related activities. We've had so many disasters over the last few years. But unfortunately, we keep very good records good reports after every disaster, but we wait for the next one without doing anything about the reports. What are the major lessons learned? What are the changes that need to be made? Who is responsible for the change? What resources is required? Let us learn from the events of the past so that we can prepare ourselves better for the future. I'm urging all of you here, lessons learned, because this is going to be the new norm. Two, the way we do development, we must consider it seriously. Development is good. But unfortunately, in most instances, we only focus on the economic gains out of development. We neglect environmental issues, we neglect the social implications. Developments are good, but there are risks. There are hazards. What do we do to deal with these risks? As you know, this can be reduced. This can be mitigated. This can be transferred. Or we live and manage the risks. Developments are good. We need development. But let us be aware of the implications. The way we do things must change. Thirdly, in terms of our major lessons learned from Winston, and I'll talk about a few other issues after this. Bear with me for a while. The way we do cooperation. We must relook really at this. And I'm thankful that we have UNESCO here, we have Asia, we have 
all the experts, the whole we do cooperation, inter and inter. I'm glad that we have made some changes in Fiji as well. And lately, we have managed with the assistance of the Philippines, we have launched our private sector uh, disaster council under the uh, Fiji uh, Employers Federation. This is after Winston. And not only within, but let us look at our regional arrangements as well. Because we need each other, we need one another. I've talked about the lessons that we have uh, gone through in Fiji uh, over the last few years. Because I would argue that if we prepare well, what we need is macroeconomic resilience. If you look at our economic performance, particularly the small island developing states, after every disaster, there is a drop, significant drop in our economic performance. And then we pick up. So there is a, this yo-yo performance type in our economic uh, growth. Every disaster, it falls. But what we need is sustained growth. And that is why investment in disaster risk reduction is so important. We are thankful for the Hyogo framework, but Hyogo is now history. Again, I think across this room we have ratified the Sendai uh, framework. What have we done about the Sendai framework? And again, I'm thankful that Yosefo is here and they are hopefully going to assist us in terms of how the region is preparing itself in as far as the uh, Sendai, the implementation of the Sendai framework uh, is involved. So this is for us important as we progress together. It's lessons learned the hard way but again, we have to accept this fact that we are vulnerable and we are the most affected. I'm thankful to the Japanese government. They are here. They have assisted us uh, in early warning systems. And I'm sure that they are also doing the same uh, for the Solomon Islands and for others, for other countries. We are also thankful that uh, through the um, assistance of our friends, we have uh, access to the uh, satellite which gives us uh, live images and that is also very helpful for us during disasters. And for all the participants who are here, because I know that you are going to influence policy, as we come together for these uh, multi-hazard warning systems, and uh, the geospatial information systems. Technology is good, and we need technology. And I hope that as partners in development, we will look at the needs, particularly of the small island countries, particularly in the Southwest Pacific region, and we will use the mechanics of the region in order to access the much needed technology so that we can be in a better position to prepare ourselves uh, for the future. And I hope that we will take this seriously for all the participants. I always emphasize, particularly in Fiji's context, we are always overwhelmed by our concerns. But how can we influence disaster risk reduction and management better. And much of that is dependent on our level of preparedness. We lost 44 lives during Winston, unfortunately. I've talked about the economic damage and the losses, huge, significant. But as we do development, what is within our influence? 
so that we can minimize, at least minimize, the damages and the losses and the costs when it comes to disasters. It's good to have technology, but I, for one, always argue that we can have the best technology, we can have the best resources. We can have all the funds, we can have all the expertise, but it takes people. It takes people for development to be sustainable. So let us cultivate the people. I hope that you will put this workshop into good use. It's good coming together for workshops, but I always challenge workshop participants, what do you do after the workshops? Because that is more important to our countries and most importantly to the vulnerable people that we serve. I hope that we can influence policies for the betterment and for raising the level of preparedness, particularly in the region. We are looking forward to the next AMCDRR, which will be in India. I know that most of you are already registering, and I hope that we, as a region, will also come prepared, particularly in our preparations for the implementation of the Shendai framework, and I hope that this workshop will greatly contribute towards our level of preparedness. And uh, I will not go into the technical details. There are technical expertise, but I just want to challenge you. And I hope that you will enjoy your time here in workshop. With those few words, thank you once again and welcome to Fiji. And I have much pleasure in declaring this uh, workshop uh, officially open. Thank you. After the pain and suffering caused by tropical cyclone Winston. It is very encouraging to see such unprecedented uh, joy amongst all Fijians. It is my great honor to open this uh, workshop, which is part of Japan's partnership with the UN SCAP to strengthen disaster early warning systems in the Pacific region. Tropical cyclone Pam striking Vanuatu and tropical cyclone Winston in Fiji last, uh, this year, clearly shows a dramatic increase in the severity of natural disasters in the Pacific region, which is why disaster risk reduction must be prioritized. As many of you know, Japan is no stranger to natural disasters. Our geographical location puts us in the path of typhoons, as well as in the Pacific Ring of Fire, which makes our country very prone to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Japanese archipelago lies on the junction of four major tectonic plates, which explains why Japan experiences uh, 1,500 earthquakes on average each year. As the world witnessed back in March 2011, the Tohoku region suffered unprecedented damage after the Great East Japan earthquake. Japan's experience of natural disasters has led to our accumulation of knowledge and technology for disaster risk reduction, and also has also motivated us to promote international cooperation in this field. Such commitment by the government of Japan is in line with the third United Nations World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction held in Sendai last year. The Sendai framework for this disaster risk reduction is the key outcome of this meeting through which Japan would provide four billion US dollars on a global scale. According to the World Bank, the Pacific region's high exposure to natural, natural hazards puts infrastructure and cash crops worth 112 billion US dollars at risk. This is why during the 7th Pacific Island Leaders Meeting, or Palm 7, which was held only two months after the Sendai Conference last year, 
Prime Minister Abe announced Japan's pledge to provide 55 billion yen, or 530 million US dollars, in a span of three years for the sustainable development, as well as for building disaster resilient capabilities of Pacific Island countries. This is in addition to Japan's 1.5 billion US dollars contribution to the Green Climate Fund and the Sendai Corporation Initiative for Disaster Risk Reduction. Japan also acknowledges the work done in this area by regional organizations. I'm pleased to say that uh, Japan has started to build the Pacific uh, Climate Change Center at SPREP in Samoa, which once completed will benefit the entire region of the Pacific uh, in the climate change related activities. Uh, Japan has also provided funding through partnership with SPC, ADB, and World Bank towards the establishment of the Pacific Catastrophe Risk Assessment and a Financing Initiative. This workshop today is the result of another partnership, our collaboration with UNSCAP. The Space and Geographic Information Systems Applications for Strengthening multi hazards Risk Assessment and Early Warning Systems in the Pacific Island countries, with a key focus on enhancing capacity. The World Bank estimates that every dollar spent on disaster prevention saves seven dollars in recovery costs. This means that the Pacific Island countries will reap benefits that are seven times the cost of Japan's assistance in disaster risk reduction. Today's workshop aims to maximize those benefits through capacity building in the application of geospatial data and early warning systems for effective and efficient disaster prevention. Japan invested much in this area on various levels. On the local level here in Fiji, Japan funded the uh, food uh, flood early warning system for 32 communities in the Western Division that included the installation of simplified rain and water level gauges and the implementation of disaster management workshops through the great as uh, grant assistance for grassroots human security projects or GGP program. On the regional level, JICA implemented a, product, a project to strengthen community-based disaster risk management using early warning systems in the Pacific region, starting with pilot communities in Fiji and the Solomon Islands. Moreover, uh, in May 2015, Japan provided meteorological equipment to Fiji Meteorological Service was 5.7 million Fiji dollars through a grant aid that was aimed at promoting international cooperation in the field of disaster risk management. This was the latest in a series of contributions to FMS, which includes the construction of its building in 1996, JICA's technical assistance for capacity enhancement of disaster risk management and ongoing meteorological training for its staff. This benefits not only Fiji, Fiji, but also other Pacific Island countries because FMS serves the wider South Pacific region. On the global level, the Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, uh, cooperated with the World Meteorological Organization earlier this year to provide satellite data receiving and processing systems to developing countries with the aim of improving early warning systems. The data used by these systems will come from the Himawari 8, the new generation geostationary meteorological satellite of JMA, which was launched in October 2014 and has been operated since July 2015. 
One, one of the most uh, variable contributions of this satellite is its ability to monitor atmospheric phenomena continuously and uniformly over various areas where surface-based observation is difficult, such as vast seas like you have here in the Pacific. The Himawari 8 is expected to improve the performance of national meteorological and hydrological services in weather forecasting, climate monitoring, disaster risk reduction, and safe transportation. Uh, the Secretary General of the y, uh, WMO, Mr. Uh, Pateri Talas, welcomes the operation of Himawari 8 as, quote, a new era for geostationary meteorological satellites, which will contribute to the prevention and management of weather-related disasters, unquote. In addition to the installation of receiving and processing systems uh, that enable the dis uh, distribution of imagery, imagery uh, data from Himawari 8 to developing countries, JMA has sent experts to visit the recipients to conduct training seminars to maximize the benefit they can derive from Himawari 8 data. <coughs> JMA is now working hard to launch the Himawari 9 this year to further advance the capabilities in the early detection of severe weather events, which will in turn contribute to disaster prevention. Before I conclude, I wish to express my hope that this workshop will play an important role in sharing difficulties, visions, and future plans among participant, participating Pacific countries, regional organizations, and UN agencies. I assure all of you that Japan will continue to support the Pacific Island countries in our common goals of this disaster risk reduction and post-disaster recovery. To the countries that are still in the reconstruction phase, I encourage you to look at the Japanese experience and be inspired to build back better. To all the participants, I hope you enjoy your stay in Fiji and may you have fruitful discussions during the workshop. Last but not least, I am confident that this project uh, will further deepen uh, the ties between Japan, UNSCAP, and the Pacific Island countries. Binaga Wakarev, Shukriya, Danyabad, thank you. Remark. Firstly, that is uh, the government of Japan uh, strong support in, uh, in front of the, your table. That is the, actually is a very minor one for you, and the official design is good for you. So to come back here around 10.30 and